Peace be with you everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Trevor, really grateful to have you here. And in today's video, I'm gonna be going over my top 10 picks for uh, cheap, affordable fragrances for spring 2023. I do have five honorable mentions, so I'm just gonna get started right away and move into the honorable mentions. Uh, first up on the honorable mentions here, I've got Warm Cotton from Clean. Uh, so I heard of, first heard about this fragrance from uh, Tiff Benson. Uh, I think she said that she wore it as a gym fragrance. Uh, reason I have it on the honorable mentions list is because I really only spray this on clothes. It's really kind of like a semi-aquatic Febreze type smell with really good longevity. Perfect for like a white t-shirt uh, going out on like a May morning. Uh, just like I said, it has that really nice clean, like it says warm cotton kind of vibe with a very mild aquatic touch going on over the top of it. Uh, incredible stuff. I really, really enjoy this one. I would have put it in the top 10 if I, you know, didn't think it was like a little bit different than the normal fragrance because it, I generally only spray it on clothes. Uh, sometimes I'll wear this uh, on clothes and then a fragrance on skin, but definitely worth checking this one out. It has that really nice fuzzy textural feel like cotton has uh, and is really a unique fragrance and you can get it for like 40 bucks at, uh, I think Joma Shop has it and then uh, Fragrance Net. Uh, I'm not sure what the price on Fragrance Net is now that they got rid of their 40% discount code, but uh, I know you can get it for right under 40 on Joma Shop. So definitely check this one out this spring. Warm cotton from Clean. Uh, next honorable mention is going to be Banana Republic's Vintage Green. Uh, again, this probably would have been in the top 10 if it wasn't a little bit more difficult to come by. Generally, you're going to find these in the rack stores. You can pick it up for like 25 bucks if it stocks there, but uh, since it's kind of you know, you're playing a, a little bit of uh, Russian roulette going into the rack store hoping to find one of these. And even if they do have Banana Republics in stock, there's no guarantee it's going to be this one. Uh, I do think PerfumeSpot.com right now has these going for right around 38 and I still think it's a pretty good deal. Uh, beautiful fragrance though, kind of like an astringent grass. Uh, you get some really nice uh, kind of um, tart citruses off the top and then there's some green tea and some fig that give it the greenery that uh, kind of replicates that fresh cut grass feel. Uh, really perfect for a really hot spring day. I like to wear this one closer to June when uh, transitioning in from the uh, spring to the summer but definitely worth checking this one out. Uh, Vintage Green 78 Banana Republic. Uh, next up on the honorable mentions list, I've got one from the House of Therapy by Aroma, and that is Shepra. Uh, only reason this one is on the honorable mentions list and not in the top 10 is because it's, uh, I'm not sure if they ship worldwide, if they are only available in the US, but for $25, you get this 100 ml and you get this beautiful Shepra fragrance. I think there's like, uh, they don't list notes, but I think there's uh, Ylang Ylang in here, um, maybe some patchouli. Uh, labdanum. Uh, what I get off this though is really kind of like Amwaj's Reflection Man minus the Oris Root. Uh, a moderate projection and longevity, about four to five hours on that, but an incredibly beautiful fragrance. I think perfect for like a nice breezy spring breeze kind of May morning. Uh, so that's Shepra from Therapia by Aroma. Uh, and then my last two honorable mentions are going to be uh, only honorable mentions because they're kind of, they have an old school appeal to them. Uh, so they might not you know, they, they've got a little bit of, uh, you know, some like oak mossy and uh, carnation, that kind of fragrance notes. So they might not appeal to everybody, but I think these are worth checking out. Uh, this is going to be Capucci Pour Homme. Uh, I think you can still get this for like 20 bucks on Fragrance Net last time I checked. Sometimes they pop up on eBay for a good price. I don't think there's much left in stock on Fragrance Net though. So if you're interested in this one, check it out. Uh, but th this is a Really interesting fragrance. It has like a really nice sparkly citrus opening and it kind of reminds me of like a lemon lime soda. Uh, but then it kind of dries into this more uh, dark kind of note profile. They, there's like some leather, some oak moss, some tobacco. Um, yeah, so like there's a uh, patchouli, there's like a little bit of sweetness going on in here, kind of similar to how Guerlain's Vetiver uh, kind of dries down into that little more myrrh and tobacco kind of feel from a bright uh, green opening. Uh, like I said, definitely worth checking this one out. I really enjoy wearing this one. It's got like a really beautiful transition and uh, it's pretty good uh, projection and longevity for a freshie. That's Capucci's Poor Home. And uh, last honorable mention here because it's got a little bit of an old school appeal is Boucheron Pour Homme. This is the Eau de Toilette version. Again, really sparkly, beautiful kind of citric opening and then it kind of 
uh, has a little bit of an old school peel. It smells a little bit like um, gas station soap or like the hand dispenser soap that you get. Uh, it's got a little bit of like a f sour, funky kind of uh, almost cheese-like um, uh, appeal to it. Which is like not to say in a bad way, but I, like I think that's what gives it a little bit of an old school appeal. There's just like that little bit of sourness going on in there. Um, but I personally love this fragrance. I've got a pretty good dent in it for uh, how big of a collection I've got. I uh, really love wearing this one on like a nice hot spring morning. And then, like I said, you know, it's got that soapy appeal with like the bright citrus going on. So I think it's perfect for this time of the year. That's Boucheron Pour Homme. Uh, you can usually find these ones for like 30, 35 as well. Okay, moving into the actual top 10. Uh, so coming in at the number 10 spot, I've got Dolce & Gabbana's Pour Homme. Uh, really nice kind of aromatic tobacco fragrance. You've got sage, tobacco, lavender. Uh, kind of basic in some sense, but a really safe option. Something that you could wear to the office. Uh, kind of smells like a basic department store sort of uh, scent profile. Something you'd maybe get out of, uh, you know, a carded sample in a magazine. but. I think it's rather lovely. I think, uh, you know, it's one that I really enjoy reaching for on a rainy day, especially when it's a little bit more of like those warm rainy days that you get in the springtime. Um, yeah, just lovely aromatic masculine fragrance. Uh, I was going to get a backup bottle, but I recently got a vintage version of this, so I'll probably be wearing that bottle uh, now instead of getting a backup bottle of this one. But the scent profile uh, is pretty similar. It's just uh, this has lower quality ingredients, but I still think this is great for a cheapie. And you can get 120 mLs for like 30, uh, right under 40 bucks. So I still think about this poor home number 10. Uh, number nine spot is going to be Aqua de Pino Cologne. Uh, so this is, uh, I actually get quite good compliments on this one. It's not got the greatest longevity, probably about like four hours tops. Um, but it's for the price that you can get this, I think Fragrance X has it for right under like 18 bucks. So you can get two of these bottles for under 40, which would be, you know, like, uh, like 240 mLs or something. Cause this is like a hundred and uh, 4.2 ounce bottle. So you can get like almost eight and a half ounces for under forty dollars of this, and uh, it's cloning um, uh, Aqua de Parma Colonia. Pretty similar scent profile. This one it has a little bit more emphasis on orange, uh, and then it's also a little bit more powdery. There's an iris note in here, and uh, yeah, like I said, a really good compliment getter. Um, really enjoyable wear. It's just like a powdery citrus aromatic fragrance uh, and you know easy to reapply because of the price point. Like I said you can get so much of it for so cheap and I really enjoy this scent profile and it is something that I have worn quite a bit. As you can see the dent in here is pretty big for uh, the size collection I have. Uh, all of it is because I've over uh, you know reapplied it quite a few times but definitely worth checking this one out. Aqua de Pino Cologne. All right, number eight spot is going to Missoni Parfum Cologne. Uh, so this is basically a Bouddha Chanel cologne, but it's got a soapy dry down that I think makes it a little bit more apt for the spring than uh, Bouddha Chanel EDT. Um, so like I said, you know, it's like just a citric, woody. Uh, there's a unique oak note in here, and I do pick up that uh, kind of uh, twist on the Bouddha Chanel DNA with the oak uh, wood in here, as opposed to, um, you know, just like the cedar and sandalwood that you get in Blue de Chanel. Uh, and then, like I said, it's got like a soapy dry down that kind of reminds me a little bit of Platinum Ego East. But yeah, just one of the best easy dumb reach fragrances for the springtime. And you can get this one for right around 40 bucks uh, for the full presentation with this nice magnetic cap. Uh, definitely worth checking this one out, Missoni Parfum Cologne. Okay, number seven spot. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and go with Dunhill Edition. Uh, I've spoken about this one quite a few times on the channel. You can get it for right around 20 bucks. Uh, what you get here is kind of like a creamy, minty Christmas tree. So there's some balsam fir in here that gives it that Christmas tree vibe. Uh, some geranium that kind of gives it the minty quality and then some like amber, tonka bean, sandalwood, those kind of quality notes that give it the creamy texture. Um, Again, it's only so-so longevity, about four to five hours on this one, but uh, like I said, for 20 bucks, it's easy to reapply, and it's like one of my favorites, uh, rainy day fragrances, so definitely worth checking this one out, Dunhill Edition. Okay, uh, number six, I think we're down to number top five, uh, number six spot. 
Yeah, I think number six is going to go to Patrick Cologne from Fragrances of Ireland. Uh, one of my favorite fougeres in my uh, collection. Um, even though it's a cheapie, you can get this for forty dollars even on like realirish.com. I think I'll link it in the description below. Uh, but yeah, it's just a really nice, creamy, semi-sweet, a little bit spicy uh, Irish Spring soap scent profile. Uh, it, and it, it came out in like 99, I think, and it doesn't really smell all that dated. There is some carnation in here, so you might get a, a little tinge of like that old school vibe. But I think this is really appealing for a modern audience as well. Per, uh, despite being an eau de cologne, I think the uh, longevity on this is pretty great. I get about six hours on it. Um, but yeah, it's it's perfectly fit for the spring and it captures that fougere, uh, you know, scent profile incredibly well. Definitely worth checking this one out. It's a little bit of a hidden gem. Uh, was my fragrance today for St. Patty's Day. This is Patrick Cologne from Fragrances of Ireland. Okay, now I think we're in the top five. Uh, so we've got Ancre Noir Sport. Uh, surprisingly, my least favorite of the Ancre Noir line, but still a great reach. Um, the grapefruit in here. Mixed with the vetiver kind of gives me a little bit of a pickle juice vibe, but that opening doesn't last very long. And uh, despite being my personal least favorite in the Ancre Noir line, this is my most complimented in the Ancre Noir line. Uh, so yeah, you just get a really kind of almost grassy vetiver. This one veers a little bit from that inkiness that the original and the Alex Strem kind of, um, you know, uh, articulate very well. So this one has more of a grassy vibe and there's some slight aquatic notes in here. Uh, a little bit darker of a version of this kind of uh, profile here with the vintage green. So you get that, like I said, grass with a little bit of darkness, a little bit more dryness, and then uh, it's kind of offset by the aquatic notes in the top. Uh, really great, easy, dumb reach. And again, one of my favorites for a rainy day. That's Ancre Noir Sport. Okay, so I think we have four left. Uh, yes, okay, so moving into number four is going to be Aqua Colonia Intense Wakening Woods of Scandinavia. Another one I've talked about a few times in the channel, I've done a full review. Uh, this one I think is perfect for year round. Uh, it is very bright and juicy. You've got a bergamot note in here that kind of plays one. Uh, the center stage kind of uh, nods its head to Terre d'Hermes's DNA but with bergamot replacing the orange and then there's a little bit of sweetness from a jammy rose running through the heart of it. Geza Schoen is the perfumer behind this one. Uh, again it's a cologne concentration so not the best longevity but uh, and then there's a balsam fir note as well that adds this like added green quality that you don't get from Terre d'Hermes and that balsam fir makes it uh, a really great wear for like a sunny winter day but overall I think this is a perfect pick for a spring day like I've got going on back here behind me today with the birds chirping and uh, just like in, that added bit of greenery uh, coming out from the balsam fir and like a little bit from the rose as well uh, makes this one of my favorite springtime wares. Okay, uh, top three, uh, we've got Dunhill Icon it's coming in at the number three spot. Uh, so kind of like a dry Neroli black pepper fragrance is what you get here. Perfect for the office time. I recently did a tag video for how to smell like a boss. This one made uh, one of the top spots on that one. Like I said, great for the office. It's got a little bit of like a citric quality um, from the Neroli in here. So it, it's, it, it, it has a citric taste almost to it from the Neroli, but it's not citric in the sense of like juicy fruity, uh, like you would get in something um, like some of the other fragrances I've mentioned in this list. Uh, but yeah, this is just very masculine, very underrated, doesn't get talked about as much. You can get it for like 40 bucks for this nice, uh, beautiful presentation, heavy bottle, uh, really class act from Dunhill. Um, Definitely worth checking out if you haven't already. And uh, this one actually has some of the better performance of uh, the fragrances on this list. I get about seven hours out of this one. That's Dunhill Icon. And then moving into the top two, um, both from the house of Lalique. Uh, I've got Ancre Noir, or, sorry, not Ancre Noir, Lalique uh, Equis Pour Homme. So Equis is uh, kind of like uh, a species name for horses. And uh, this is the Eau de Parfum version. They had a different Eau de Toilette that had a engraved horse's head on the bottle. This one is a laser print. Um, the EDT is discontinued, so this is the only one that you can really find on discounters anymore. Uh, scent profile is kind of the same. This one's a little bit more warm, whereas the EDT was a little bit more cold from uh, an emphasis on juniper berry. But both are great pickups. This one you can get for like $25, uh, $25, $30. Bucks. 
Really beautiful, dry. Uh, there's some unique wood notes in here. I think you've got a redwood, uh, like uh, a, a sequoia note in here. That makes this like a really unique woody fragrance. And then it kind of just has this, there's some mace pepper. So it's a very peppery, dry, woody fragrance, but it's great uh, contrast for kind of like that part of the early spring where the rains are coming and the woods are starting to kind of give off a little bit of their scent profile off the trees and like the logs and things like that because they're realivening with the uh, wetness after the dryness of the winter. Um, beautiful stuff just I think epitomizes the uh, kind of spirit of spring very well. Uh, really great transitional fragrance though. You could get away with this one in the fall. So definitely worth having this one in your collection. This is Lalique Accuse. And then my number one pick for the month of spring uh, for cheapies is gonna be Lalique Linsumi. Uh, a, kind of like a neo fougere, it captures that aromatic kind of green uh, appeal. I think there's some like, lavender in here. It's like kind of like a basil mojito as well. And there's like some rum in here that gives it a little bit of sweetness, but it's very subtle. Uh, and then the basil kind of gives it a bit of a sour sharpness. Uh, but overall you get the composition of notes coming together to smell like a really nice sweet shaving cream. Uh, excellent stuff. Uh, I've seen this even make top 10 lists of spring fragrances, not uh, with without like a price point. Um, so just like in general, this is a really great one to have in your collection for the springtime. Uh, Lalique is uh, a class act in terms of offering incredible quality juice for a good price. And this is going to be my number one pick for springtime for affordable fragrances. Uh, you can get a test of this one for like right around 30 bucks. So definitely check these all out. Uh, let me know if there's anything I missed in the comment section down below. What are you going to be wearing this spring? And I appreciate you sticking with me in this video. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.